What's the word, y'all? Can you just give me a few minutes to talk about the Chicago Bulls? I think it's normal for NBA fandom to go in waves and ups and downs and everything. And right now, I'm kind of on a, on a high, a relative high when it comes to Chicago Bulls. And I know this is extreme cope. And I know this is just setting myself up for being disappointed. But I'm kind of excited about the Bulls season. I, let me talk about it. Everybody here knew, uh, had the similar idea that the Bulls should be selling right now, right? You made the big, the big three of Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, and for the most part, it hasn't resulted to anything. We had the one stretch in the first year where everything was great. The first 40 games of the season, the Bulls were looking great. We had one point, we were the number one seed on the Eastern Conference. Obviously, that has been extremely short-lived with some injuries to Lonzo Ball, and then after that, the Bulls fell off for the second half of the season. They make the playoffs, and they lose in five to the Milwaukee Bucks. Next season, they say, hey, Let's run it back. We won't be blindsided by a major injury of Lonzo Ball. We can go into next season knowing exactly what our team is because we know that Zoe's not hooping, and it was a disaster. And if you ask most people in NBA fandom what NBA team is the most directionless, the answer for most people will be the Chicago Bulls. Zach Levine just signed a max extension last offseason. DeMar DeRozan is on the last year of his deal. Hell, we just extended Nikola Vucevic. We have bought in to this mid-three. And still, I'm kind of excited about the season. And I will say this again. I went into this offseason thinking that we should have made some adjustments. DeMar, Zach, Vooch, like all three of them cannot be back. And here they are. <laughs> here we go. Because everything about the big three is, is bad. Um, the eye tests, if you just watch the boys, you can tell that it doesn't really match. But the advanced stats say the same thing. When those three players are on the court together, they are a net negative. What big three? What all-star three? is what they want to call each other, is a net negative when you're trying to compete. Remember, we traded away Window Carter, Franz Wagner, and basically Jet Howard for Nikola Vucevic a couple years ago. You don't give up that much draft capital in a young, promising player to maybe make the play-in, to lose in the play-in, right? A lot of us thought that, hey, you lost the deal, wipe your hands of it, just move on to the next direction, and they decided to double down. With all of that being said, considering the direction of the team, I thought that they had a decent offseason. Again, and this is only because they decided to stay packed. The best offseason is, is making the adjustments. But since they didn't make the adjustments, the moves around it kind of helped. You got Javon Carter in on a pretty solid deal. Javon Carter has been a flamethrower from behind the arc, and obviously he's a hard-nosed, get-into-your-grill-type defender. Torrey Craig is another wing body that we've desperately, desperately needed over the years. They brought back Kobe White, who showed us last season a lot of things. Now, maybe not the things that people compared him to Gilbert Arenas coming out of college, because that's the real thing. Uh, his player comp was Gilbert Arenas. Now, he ain't that. But it showed us a lot over last season from the offensive and defensive stance where I was excited about having him back on the team regardless of the direction. If they decide to sell everything, I wanted Kobe White to stay on his team, and he is. And then the last thing, of course, was bringing uh, back Ayo DeSumo on, what, a three-year, $21 million deal. Obviously, you look at that team on paper, you still say, hey, matter of fact, let's do the thought experiment. Let's do the experiment. Is it likely that the Bulls will be better than the Bucks? Nope. That's one team. How about the Celtics? Nope. What about the 76ers? Nope. They don't know what's going on with James Harden, but I still feel confident the 76ers will be better than the Bulls. How about the Cavaliers? Nope. How about the Knicks? Nope. The Nets, I could see a world where the Bulls have a better record than the Nets. I could see a world where the Bulls have a better record than the Hawks, but again, that's saying, I, I do believe the Hawks are going to be good this season. Um, the Heat, probably not. The Raptors, there's a world where it could happen. And then we're not even talking about the teams like the Pacers who could take a jump or the Magic that could take a jump or whatever, whatever. So at the bare minimum, there are six teams that everybody could pretty much say with consensus are better than the Bulls. So where does that put you as a perennial, perennial, is that the word, play-in team? It's not good. Yet, still here I am thinking, hey, maybe things break a little bit right. Not, no, no, not break in the sense that we about to make a finals push because that would be asinine. But break to the sense that we could potentially end up top six. And right now in my fandom, because they decided to do this, that's what I need. You know what I'm saying? I think the, the perfect example, the perfect offseason was starting fresh, but they didn't. So now we have to tinker the expectations and say, hey, end up top six. That'll be fine. I'm hearing myself talk and I'm just realizing how much I'm coping with the team being just not good. Um, I went back and, I, and because we're in the offseason, I'm watching a ton of random NBA stuff. And actually, I can show you the exact game I was watching the other day. It was this game uh, versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. I was watching this game or the highlights of this game. And I was just thinking to myself, we really had this starting lineup with Paul Zipser, David Nwaba, 
Denzel Valentine and stuff. Heavy, heavy on the tank. They won 27 games and they won 22 games and they won 22 games. And the end result of our tanking seasons is this roster. Think about it. Every time you see a team tank and then they turn the corner, which I would say that's what the Bulls did when they decided to trade all of the stuff away and buy into DeMar Vooch and Zach Levine. They turned the corner. You have to think about the years that you endured as a fan of watching terrible basketball and figure out, was it worth it that I just watched three years of 27 wins, 22 wins, and 22 wins for this team to be still not good? I did that. Um, but there, there are, even with all that considered, the bright spots. And this is why I'm ex excited about the season. Oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, I cannot believe I'm doing it. Listen, I'm a hypocrite. I'm saying it right now. There's been times in this channel where, where I've, I've told people, do not fall for no off-season workout stuff because everybody looks like a god in a gym without other NBA players. You can probably compilate all of the basketball clips that I have on YouTube and say, dang, Kenny kind of nice on the court. Kenny's not nice on the court. So don't fall for the off-season workout, but I did, all right? I fell for it. Because look at this man who, it's time, baby. It's P. Willie time, baby. That's against Evan Mobley. Hold on. Ain't you really good defensively? Stop back. Who is this? I don't even know who guarding you. I can't even see the face. I don't, it doesn't matter. But it's flat out. And I just, I, man, man, man. If there's any player that is going to unlock a mid roster, it's this man right here. But throughout the course of a young Patrick Williams' career, he's been basically dele delegated to be the force option at best. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Vucevic, those are offensive first players, which is funny because the Bulls' offense sucks. Those are offensive first players, which means that Patrick Williams has been a spot-up three-point shooter, and he's a really good one. He was like 16th in the league on catch-and-shoot threes. This year. He's a really good spot-up three-point shooter. But when you draft a guy fourth overall for his potential, I believe you have to put him in the position to maximize that potential, and that's not what we've done. Now, I'm not going to look at these offseason highlights and forget about the, the Patrick Williams that I saw during the regular season last year where he was hesitant to put the ball on the floor, where sometimes when he did, he still shuffled them puppies and, and turned the ball over because he's traveling, or there being times where the teammates on the roster had to tell him to shoot the ball. Like, that aggression thing, I can't look past that because of this offseason workout. But he just became old enough to take a sip of alcohol. He just became old enough to take a sip of alcohol, y'all. There are people that were drafted in this year's draft that are older than Patrick Williams. And I say all of that to say there's such a long time left in his career for him to develop. But with him being the fourth option, it's a, it's a lot more difficult for him to turn into the player that some of us believe he can be. I'm not a guy that's telling you he's going to turn into Kawhi or anything like that. But his career shouldn't be spotting up in a corner and hitting corner jump shots. Like, there's a lot more to him. This graph right here shows you his play type by usage. All of his, most of his attempts, his play types were just spotting up. 2% on ISO, 7% on pick and roll ball handling, 6% as a roll man, 7% uh, on cuts, and then handoffs and off screens and stuff. Hold on, this don't even equal 100 so it's not a percentage points. But this just shows you that he is primarily a spot-up player at this point in his career when he could, he should be able to experiment on all of these different fronts to figure out who he is as a player. But since the team has decided they want to be fake competitive, it prevents him from doing this. I, I don't know, fellas. I just feel like there is a world where the Bulls are at least okay. And I'm still super high on Patrick Williams. Did I say anything of value today? Probably not. But hey, it's just, uh, tell me what you think about the Bulls. Actually, don't. Actually, don't do that. I know you. I know what you think about the board.